Receiving a large sum of money can feel hugely overwhelming, especially if it's coupled with a life upheaval and deciding whether to invest the entire amount in one go or rather to drip feed it slowly into the market can feel like a real brain teaser. Watch the video for some ideas on which way is the right way for you. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Michelle. Welcome to my channel where we talk of money and having more of it. In this video, we're going to take a look at the pros and cons of investing a lump sum in one go versus drip feeding it over time. Investing a lump sum in one go means you get into the market at one price, which may turn out to be a high price if the market drops in the next day, the next week or the next couple of months. Investing a small amount regularly means you invest at different prices over time and sometimes you'll invest when the market is high and sometimes when it's low but this will smooth the average price you bought in at and this is referred to as pound cost averaging. Now some would argue that you should hold out on your investing until the market is down and then invest the entire lump sum. But the thing about this is it's really difficult to time the market and really time in the market is better than trying to time the market. So let's take a look at both sides of the argument and then come up with a conclusion as to which is the best approach. Let's firstly consider the impact of investing the entire lump sum. One of the keys to investing success is the time your money is invested. And this is important because the longer you are invested, the longer the returns you earn can also be invested and earn a return. And this is referred to as compounding, where the income you're earning on your investment gets reinvested and also earns a return. It's like magic. It's literally your money growing on itself. And if this sounds like one of those get rich quick schemes or ads, listen to the story I came across on a website called The Compound Investor. Grace Groner, who worked for Abbott Labs her entire life as a secretary, left a seven million endowment to her alma mater when she died. Now, did she have a huge inheritance? No. So how did she do this? She literally bought three shares in Abbott for some total of $180 and held these for 75 years. So the moral of this story is that time is the catalyst to the magic. And the sooner you get your lump sum invested, the better. And in fact, long-term investors don't care when they get into the market or that the market may drop off a cliff the next day. They're in it for the long-term prize. So the other alternative is drip feeding into the market. And the general idea behind this is that you want to get into the market when it's down. So this is the buy low, sell high mentality. But as I said earlier, it's virtually impossible to perfectly time the market. And the longer you wait to get in, the more time you forfeit and the more of the key to the magic you lose. To counter this risk of sitting on the sidelines and waiting for the big dip, an alternative is to pound cost average and add smaller amounts into the market on a regular basis. Now this approach has the added benefit of making investing seem a little less daunting because you're putting a smaller amount over a regular time period in addition to providing that smoothing to your investment returns. So a rise in the market means the value of your current investments goes up and the amount you drip feed will be able to buy less new investments because they're expensive. A dip in the market means the value of your current investments goes down, but the amount you drip feed now is facing a huge sale in the market and can buy more assets to add to your investment. So basically it smooths when you get into the market in the highs and the lows. So which is the best approach? Now, while there is a mathematical answer, there's also the psychological consideration of which approach lets you sleep better at night with less stress. But let's take a look at the numbers. Let's assume you have a lump sum of 12,000, which you can invest and earn the market average of 8% per year. I've got to just say right here, that's a big assumption. And although the S&P 500 has returned on average over 13%, including dividends over the last 10 years, this is not a guaranteed return for the next 10 years. But let's use this optimistic number in any event. 
we're going to assume you're investing this amount for 10 years. And this is what your lump sum's growth trajectory looks like. As you can see, that 12,000 lump sum has grown to a nice, juicy 25,900. Okay. So let's take a look at investing this on a drip feed basis, so 100 per month. For the same 10 years, this works out the same 12,000. And this one, as you can see on this graph, would return 18,500. It's clear the difference that time in the market can make on the exact same 12,000 investment. Well, we've established that the lump sum investment as soon as possible is the mathematically superior way to go in the scenario. However, as mentioned earlier, it may not be the best approach for you if you know your level of risk tolerance is just not up to putting that 12,000 on that potential roller coaster all in one go. So how can you do it to get the best of both worlds? Well, let's say you invest an affordable monthly amount of 100 or 50 or whatever you can do per month regularly. And then when you receive a lump sum and you're feeling more comfortable with investing, you invest that lump sum in one go. On the previous example, let's assume that you invested 6,000 immediately as a lump sum and the remaining 6,000 over the 10 years as 50 pounds per month your investment would look like this. That means you would have a return of 22,465, that's your investment amount after 10 years. So it's really a nice middle ground between the 25,000 and the 18,500 on the other two approaches. But the key is whichever way you're able to go is to get started. ASAP, i.e. as soon as possible, so that the amount you invest can grow over time. So if you're ready to get started and just want a little bit more information, pop down to the notes below and grab the Investing 101 guide. If you like this video, please let me know by liking it and share it with any other ladies who want to change their financial stories. If you have anything to comment, please leave a comment. And for more financial education and money talk designed for women, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of when I post a new video. It would be great to chat to you again in the future.